Good morning, Nina. It is Thursday, October 13. Thank you for joining us on our uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Show, if you will. Can't believe it's been a year since our last show, but here we are all dressed in pink. We have a special guest to help us with this information this week. Thank you for joining us. Grab a cup of coffee. Good morning, Enid. It is time to rise and shine. Hope you're off to a great start this Thursday morning. Can't believe how quick these days go. Here we are al already mid-October here on the 13th. Hold and steady, 45 degrees. I stepped outside early this morning at the farm, looked around, didn't see a star one. So I think it's mostly cloudy out today. And if you're planning the, the weather for the day, the high, day, high today excuse me, will be around 59. And there is a 30% chance of showers, so keep that in mind for your Thursday. And it's 731, and speaking of temperatures, let's take a look at some of the statewide temps across the state. Yeah, typically cooler in the Panhandle, and you can see at Texoma it's 43 this morning, but all the way in the southeastern part of the state, it's Sawyer, typical area that's warmer than anybody else. But if you look at that, say, yep, that's Oklahoma, anywhere from 40 to 60 degrees across the state this morning, but it's 45 here in the Enid area. So uh, football is alive and well with high school and college and just the fall festivals the weekends are full and so let's take a look uh, we've got fall temperatures today but for the three-day forecast over the weekend this is what it looks like friday's looking pretty fallish 77 degrees wow what happened to saturday and sunday and then i heard monday was going to be another 90 degree day so you can see right there that uh, we've got some great weather as long as it doesn't go in august from 102 to 22 and sometimes it seems like our fall only lasts for about one week but we'd like for it to last through november so anyway it looks like we got a warm weekend to still get out and enjoy this week weekend i'd like to mention special thanks to our friends at any floral and gifts through the last couple of years they've helped us with a fall arrangement you'll have a you'll have a look at that fall arrangement in just a few moments but i had it in my notes to mention to them say thank you to them right off the bat they help us with our studio desert, uh, set design, so special thanks to Enid Floral and Gifts. So it's moving along this morning. Hope you're having a great day. And again, high today is going to be 59, but it looks like it's going to be kind of a cloudy fall day as you plan your weather. Well, if you want to find out what happened overnight in the news, there's only one guy that we turn to, and we call him the bow tie guy because he's always dressed uh, very GQ-ish is what I call it. So it's time now at 734 almost for the Oklahoma Minute with the bow tie guy, Derek Silas. Homeland Security rejects Oklahoma's Real ID extension request, which means beginning January 30, Oklahoma driver's licenses and state-issued ID cards will no longer be accepted for entering federal buildings or facilities, including federal courthouses and military installations. ONG agrees to pay $1 million fine related to Oklahoma City gas leak and home explosion in the Walnut Creek Estates neighborhood where one house was destroyed and 50 homes damaged on January 2nd. Tonight, Oklahoma City Thunder will play the Memphis Grizzlies at 7 p.m. at the BOK Center in Tulsa. And in sports this Saturday, OU will play Kansas State at 11 a.m. in Norman. It will air on ESPN. Tulsa University will play the University of Houston in Texas at 6 p.m. It will air on ESPN, too. And on this day in history, 
In 1775, the Continental Congress authorizes construction and administration of the first American naval force, the precursor to the United States Navy. In 1792, the cornerstone is laid for a presidential residence, later called the White House, in the newly designated capital city of Washington. And in 1999, the Colorado grand jury investigating the case of child beauty queen John Bidet Ramsey, who was murdered in December 1996, is dismissed. And the Boulder County District Attorney announces no indictments will be made due to insufficient evidence. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve. Uh, Derek, I'm not going to let you off the hook so early, but thank you for the overnight news. But you got Sammy Davis Jr. behind you. What's up with that? Do you know? Am I, am I putting you on the spot there? We know that it's 7:35, and it, that's in that Charlie, in that uh, Charlie Chan. Is that right? AJ, help me out. So I got Charlie Chan. I got Shirley Temple, and uh, we always have these subliminal messages behind Derek, and I'm trying to figure out. Okay, I didn't know if it was Sammy Davis Jr.'s birthday or what, but anyway, we'll say hello to Sammy Davis Jr. up there. So, I got ahead of myself a little bit there. We were talking about fall weather and fall flowers and fall arrangements, stuff like that. And I failed to mention uh, to go over our schedule for Friday night lights. And Penn informed me, but there's a lot of Thursday night games because I guess fall break is taking place in schools. I know the Enid Plainsman have a uh, Thursday night game coming up in a week or so. But here we are for Friday night lights. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that schedule. I know the Plainsmen are looking to win number three in a row as they travel down to Lawton. Uh, my wife went to school, graduated. She, yeah, she went to high school, and uh, good for her. But anyway, Enid's going to play her old high school, the Lawton, uh, the Wolverines, down this Friday night. But you see some of the Thursday night games. Is Chisholm still undefeated, everybody? Yes. Very good. And your son, Derek, is playing for Chisholm, I think, or he's in the band or both. And, uh, but anyway, we know Chisholm is really marching along. But you see some of the Thursday night games. And then my old alma mater, Perry, goes to Alva and plays the Gold Bugs on Friday night. So thank you, Penn, for putting that up there. That's Friday Night Lights, my favorite time of the year. You have the fall colors. And I was driving, uh, I guess it was sa Sunday afternoon. I noticed some of the trees were starting to turn and uh, just loved that. So that's that. Okay, if you have some pictures... Uh, that you want to share, maybe some fall flowers or foliage or anything to do with fall or just pumpkins or whatever it is, you can send those pictures to us at gme at enid.org, as you see on the screen right there. GME, for good morning, Enid, at enid.org. Also, I think, do we have a birthday today? I, I believe we do. I didn't put it in my notes. And um, I'm going to go with Reva. Leighton, if I'm wrong, I sincerely apologize. But we want to wish you the very best on your birthday that's coming up on Sunday, October 16th. We know that a lot of folks in some of our retirement homes are watching our show, and we welcome you to Good Morning Enid. So if you have a birthday coming up here in October, November, December, send us your birthday uh, date and the name and the number if you want to, because we've celebrated a few young ladies who celebrated 100 years on their birthdays. Send it to GME at ena.org. Also, we had some pictures come in through the mail, and uh, most of us in this studio are big fans of cats. And uh, AJ, look at those precious kittens. AJ, who works behind the scenes to help us with Good Morning Enid, uh, woke up one day, and he was the proud father of four new kittens. And uh, not sure where the mom's at. Mom's doing okay, I'm sure. But look at those precious. They'd fit in your hand right there. And there's the one in the food bowl. That's what they do. They get in the food bowl but while they're eating. So anyway, we congratulate AJ for uh, the new four cats that are coming. Okay, enough of that. It's 739. Again, hold and study at 45 degrees. And to find out the many events that are going on at the event center, Brooke is back. Good morning, Enid. I am happy to be here with you again this morning. We have several events going on at the Central National Bank Center. So just this month alone, we've got a lot going on. To start off just tomorrow, on Friday, the United Way Chili Cook-Off. 
that's going to be a great event for you can, to come out and try lots of chili. And our chef, he will be making some chili of his own as well. So glad to have that event with us tomorrow. Be sure to come out. And then on Saturday, the Leonardo's Princess Ball. That's going to be such a fun event for the daddies and daughters to come out and dance the Princess Ball. That's going to be in the CMB Center Grand Ballroom. And then in the arena, we'll have the Roller Girls. That's going to be at 7 p.m. You can get tickets at the door at our box office. And then to round out the month, we'll have the Celtic Thunder. Tickets are still available for this event, and group discounts for groups of 10 or more are available. So we're really glad to have these fabulous men here um, with us this month. And lastly, to start out November, we'll have J. Owen House, the authentic illusionist with Dare to Believe. And he went to Montana at MSU where he graduated with a psychology degree. So he knows all about manipulation. So you'll definitely be able to see a great show from a very smart man. So we're excited to have that. Tickets are still available for that as well. Thank you and back to you, Steve. Very good, Brooke. Thank you very much. Good morning, Nina. It is 741. And I remember when the Roller Girls came to the ETN studios and we're on our show. So we wish them well. And again, thank you for joining this morning. It is time for our very special guest. Thank you for joining us. Get an up a, another cup of coffee because this is a segment that you don't want to miss. And it's time for One on One with Jamara. Welcome to One on One with Jamara. Our special guest today is Dr. Alicia Van Hooser. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Van Hooser, for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all wearing our pink, and October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we would like to know what is the number one recommendation that you, could, you can give for women out there? The most important thing is for all women, and men for that matter, uh -huh. to be um, breast aware. Patients sometimes will find their own breast cancer well before the time their physician will. And so the thing to know is your own body and what's going on with your body, and also to be aware of the recommendations to have screening mammograms. Mammograms are the number one way we can screen patients to find breast cancer. It's the most cost-effective way, and uh, we usually start our baseline mammogram about the age of 40, mm -hmm. and the recommendations have changed recently, where we used to say 35, you might get a baseline, and then a mammogram at 40. Now they're kind of backing off a little bit, but most people still start their baseline at 40 and get an annual mammogram from then on, as long as a patient is in good health. Okay. Okay. Now, as a radiologist, um, you interpret the mammograms and ultrasounds. What is it that you look for when you're performing this testing? Well, when a patient comes in for a screening mammogram, mm -hmm. that would be just routine four views, two views of each breast, and we use your old mammograms as comparison. That's why that baseline is so important, because it's like your template to see how you change as mm -hmm. you age. And when we look at mammograms, we're looking for masses. We're looking at microcalcifications. Uh, they are a byproduct of a lot of disease processes, but some cancers will present as these abnormal microcalcifications. We also look at the architecture pattern of the breast, mm -hmm. which is hard to describe, but it's how the tissue lays. And if you have your older films, you can see how is that changing. And so a screening study is exactly what that word screening is. It's a it's like a C, um, blood test. It tells you, is there something abnormal with your thyroid? If there is, we're gonna do more specific tests. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with a mammogram. I always try to urge patients to not freak out, which is hard to do <laughs> when you get called back. Yeah. It's a screening test, so we may need to do other tests to determine if there's something wrong, meaning uh, magnified views for those little microcalcifications, yes. or we may do an ultrasound. An ultrasound will tell us, is this mass a cyst? Is it not? And that w that's an, an ancillary test that will then help from that screening test. So these tests are complementary. I always tell ladies there's no perfect test. There are some that are better than others for certain disease processes, but there's no perfect test. But the screening mammogram is the best way to uh, have yourself evaluated and screened. Okay. So. And just if someone feels something 
wrong or new with their bodies, the best right. shot is to call their doctor and he would be the one um, that would refer the patient refer to the us. Patient. Okay. And when you come in, that's called a diagnostic mammogram, okay. which means I think I have a problem in some area of the breast. We will do extra views, not just the screening for views, we'll do extra injections mm -hmm. and we'll also probably do an ultrasound too. Now, sometimes we don't need to, the mammogram will answer the question, mm -hmm. but a lot of times we will do an ultrasound also to evaluate. So patients help themselves when they come in and say, look extra hard right here, okay? And so we will take those extra views to evaluate that. Mm -hmm. One, to make sure there's nothing wrong and hopefully put the lady at ease. So most patients that get called back for additional workups from their screening test, most of them are benign. So I always tell ladies, think of the odds. Your odds are very good. When you get called back, there's a, usually a benign process going on. So. Okay, well that's good to know. Mm -hmm. And typically, how long does it take for them to receive the results? Um, I typically will read the test that day, mm -hmm. but it, there's a lot of times if we're waiting for your old pictures to come in or mm -hmm. images to compare, we will give a, another facility two weeks to get us those images. After two weeks, we will read it no matter what. Okay. The technologists are trained to, if there's something that looks suspicious to them because mm -hmm. they've taken images as long as I've read images, <laughs> they will come in and say, will you just look at this and let me know if I can put it away to be watched or not. Now a diagnostic test, I will read that day. And so if you have something we're evaluating, I'm gonna read that out no matter whether I have old images or not. So the results are available real quickly. So Now in the event that it's not benign or you know mm -hmm. it, it doesn't come out well what would be the next step the next step is uh, when I do since I do the uh, biopsy procedures okay. okay I will which will either be a mammogram directed which is called a stereotactic biopsy that uses imaging like the mammogram as a guide typically that's for these little micro calcifications or if I do an ultrasound guided biopsy I will call them with the result, which can vary. It can take up to a week to get that result. Sometimes I get it in less than 24 hours. It depends on what the pathologist has seen on the slides, whether mm -hmm. they need to do extra stains. And at that point, I will discuss the result with the patient's physician and also then call the patient and we will decide on what surgeon. The next step is typically to go see a surgeon. Okay. And uh, sometimes the patient will be evaluated with an MRI test before they go see that surgeon. MRI is a very sensitive test for, especially for a lady that has a biopsy proven malignancy or cancer of the breast. Okay. It is not a good screening test in the general population because it's expensive and the sensitivity is so high, we sometimes see things that may not be as indicative of cancers that we have to evaluate. But it's the best test for a lady that has a biopsy proven cancer so we can make sure we offer the best treatment option for her in the way of a surgical procedure. So it's an ancillary test we also use with high risk patients. Mm -hmm. Patients uh, that are at high risk typically have more than one first degree relative with breast cancer, which would be a mother, a daughter, or a father. There's a lot of male breast cancer out there. so. Uh, and we have uh, questions we ask patients when they come in to determine, are you at high risk? Mm -hmm. Those ladies will also be recommended to have MRI every year also, to be staggered with uh, the mammogram if they're at high risk. Okay, and for those that have a parent or a, a member of their family that right. had the history of the cancer, um, they still need to begin at 40, their yes. testing? Okay. Most of the time, unless what I tell patients is, if your mother had breast cancer diagnosed at the age of 30, we need to start looking at you 10 years before your parent was diagnosed at a minimum. Okay. So let's say your mother had cancer at 35, then at 25 we would start imaging her with either a mammogram or an ultrasound or some other testing because we want to start one decade before their parent or their first degree relative was diagnosed. Okay. Now. Um for any other sources of information, we want to stress that they need to visit their uh, primary doctor and to keep checking themselves, right? Check themselves and the recommendation recently is for physicians to not do self-breast ex um, exams on their patients. 
And that seems counterintuitive, but I always tell patients, you know your breast better than anyone else. Yeah. So you will know yes. more than your doctor will know because your doctor gets a one-time evaluation maybe every year or when you come in, may not be every year. Mm -hmm. And so patients are really the best advocate for their breast health. They'll know if there's a change. If there's a skin change, nipple retraction, uh, discharge from the breast that they've never had before, or if they feel something that's abnormal that does not decrease in size, especially after their cycle. But ladies, I said, you will know. Don't yeah. give up, you will know. Mm -hmm. And what really uh, struck me is that men can have that disease as well, so they need to check themselves. It's not just the women, men also That's are at correct. risk. And they find their <laughs> cancers usually earlier than women do because they don't have as much breast tissue. And so they notice right away if there's a change in their breast, if they will come in and be evaluated. So. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Van Hooster, thank you very much for visiting with us this morning and providing all the information um, for us. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's go back to Steve now. Thank you for watching One on One with Jamara. Jamara, thank you very much. And Dr. Van Hooser, thank you. Uh, one of the comments that we, we received last year when Dr. Van Hooser was with us was she was just a wealth of information. And uh, so I'm sitting here listening to this past 10 minutes or so. And again, we appreciate her sharing her expertise and just these most important suggestions and a wealth of information about what we're trying to present on the show today. So we appreciate Dr. Van Hooser being with us today. Hold and steady, 45 degrees on this Thursday, October 13th. And the clock tells us it's 751. So if you're rushing to get out the door to be somewhere by 8 o'clock, you have just a few minutes to get there. And if you're planning uh, the day wardrobe-wise, uh, high today is going to be around 59. It's going to be mostly cloudy because the weatherman says 30% ch chance of showers throughout the day today. So keep that in mind. And again, for our pilots watching out of Vance, we always appreciate our, 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 our fans, if you will, our friends, I should say, at Vance. Our winds are out of the north, northeast at 9 miles per hour right now. So, again, to find out what happened with the news overnight, if you missed the bow tie guy earlier this morning, he is back. Here's Derek Silas with the Oklahoma Minute. ONG agrees to pay a $1 million fine related to an Oklahoma City gas leak and home explosion in the Walnut Creek Estates neighborhood where one house was destroyed and 50 homes damaged on January 2nd. Homeland Security rejects Oklahoma's Real ID extension request, which means beginning January 30, Oklahoma driver licenses and state-issued IDs will no longer be accepted for entering federal bu buildings or facilities, including federal courthouses and military installations. Tonight, Oklahoma City Thunder will play the Memphis Grizzlies at 7 p.m. at the BOK Center in Tulsa. And Saturday, OU will play Kansas State at 11 a.m. in Norman. It will air on ESPN. And Tulsa University will play the University of... Houston and Texas at 6 p.m. It will air on ESPN2. And on this day in history in 1775, the Continental Congress authorizes construction and administration of the first American naval force. In 1792, the cornerstone is laid for a presidential residence later called the White House. And in 1999, the Colorado Grand Jury investigated the case of child beauty queen Jean John Benet Ramsey is dismissed and the Boulder County District Attorney announces no indictments will be made due to insufficient evidence. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve. History lesson once again. What, what was the date, Derek, on the uh, foundation for the uh, White House? 17-something? 92. 1792. There you go. Walk around the school hallways today. Said, you know the foundation for the White House was started in 1792? And they'll look at you like, boy, you're either smart or who cares kind of deal so anyway thank you derek we appreciate that it's 753 i'd like to mention the uh, i failed to mention earlier this morning but the metropolitan area planning commission that meeting is coming up next monday and <clears throat> excuse me and for those of you who may not have uh cable Sunlink cable uh, one of the things that we do here at the ena television network we live stream that mapc meeting so you can go to enatv.org Go on your smartphone, your computer, iPad, whatever device that you have. Go to enatv.org. So next Monday, you can watch the MAPC meeting, and it gets underway around 6 p.m. And then next day will be Tuesday. We'll have the city commission meeting. And again, we will live stream that on channel 12, but we'll live stream it on enatv.org. The study session gets underway in the lower level conference room at 5 o'clock. 
and um, the city council meeting gets underway at 6.30. And again, all this information you're able to see from your smartphone or also on the Enid Television Network. So we try to, to be accessible and uh, uh, just really informative with our city government, and that's coming up. Again, for the three-day forecast, real quick, for those that are planning uh, the weekend, if it's a football game, or I know my grandson is in the middle of uh, soccer, and uh, you can see right there for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we just got a warming trim, which is not bad at all. So in other words, all those projects that you've been putting off this fall or this summer, looks like Saturday, Sunday is a good time to do that with the upper 80s and low 90s. And I'm speaking to myself when I talk about those projects. Okay, it's 7.55. Good morning, Nina. We appreciate you joining us each and every Thursday morning. And now it's time to find out, again, with all the many events that are going on in Enid, and the one person who tells us all of that, Brooke is back. Happy to be here with you this morning. We have several events going on this month with this Friday, tomorrow, the United Way Chili Cook-Off. Very excited about that event, and our chef will be there with some of his chili as well. Then, on Saturday, we'll have the Leonardo's Princess Ball. That's going to be a great event, and I do believe it is sold out, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And also on Saturday, in the arena, we'll have the Roller Girls. It's at 7 p.m., and you can get tickets at the southwest corner um, of the arena at the box office. And then, to round out the month, we have... Celtic Thunder, that's at 7.30. Group discounts are available for groups of 10 or more, and we do have tickets still available. And lastly, to go into November, J. Owen House, with a psychology degree from MSU, he will definitely wow you at Dare to Believe. Thank you, and back to you, Steve. Thank you, Brooke. You all have been very helpful through the 91 shows that we've done on Good Morning Enid because we always take an opportunity to present to you a pet that needs adopted. And you have come through numerous times and we appreciate that. So let's take a moment, uh, grab a pen, excuse me, write down this number 249-4910 as you watch this pet promo. And thank you for helping us out because we're always trying to find a home for these pets. like this are found and brought to Enid Animal Control every day. All of these animals are in need of good homes. Please consider adopting a dog or a cat for Enid Animal Shelter. Call us at 249-4910 or come down to see us at 1200 South 10th Street. Okay, welcome back. Good morning, Enid. 757 on this Thursday, October 13th, 45 degrees. And you saw me glance off to the left there. Well, we have a good looking pooch. Axton, I believe is his name. Need my glasses here. Robin, you're going to have to write this larger for me next week, okay? <laughs> Just kidding. If we take a look at Axon, good morning, Axon. What a beautiful dog. Look at that brown and the white mix. It's just beautiful. Axton's a male, 10-month-old lab, uh, very loving, looks pretty mild-mannered to me. And in this studio, we have some very bright lights, and that doesn't seem to bother Axton. Look how mild-mannered he is. He, I understand that he's good with other dogs and he would be great with a small family. That way he can garner all the attention. Oh, I had to get up early for today's show. Had a big yawn there. Way to go. Axton, we'll find you a new home. And ladies and gentlemen, 249, there he goes. He goes, I'm just going to chill here for a little bit. 249-4910 is the number to call if you want to give Axton a home. And again, he's 10 months old, lab mix, got big ears, beautiful color on him. So, well, we're going to have to get out of here for today. Axton, thanks for being here. Thank you for being with us on Good Morning Enid. Make it a great day. We'll see you next Thursday. <laughs>